Hi folks, my name is Jay Amarones and I'm a transformation engineering lead here at Software AG and a specialist in the Eris platform. And today we're doing another one of our, of our video series, Help, I'm an Eris Admin. Tips and tricks to help you as an Eris administrator with your very first project or Eris instance. Now, I, I know some of these topics are gonna start to getting a little bit more technical, things you might not need for just your Eris first instance, but maybe if you've been an Eris admin before, or you've had a little bit of experience, these things will help you with the next one um, as, as you get into sort of some of the more advanced topics and capabilities that you're gonna be using for your organizations or projects as they really get into it. Um, because this is one where you don't necessarily need to do it off the bat. Um, this is something that is very handy um, and uh, a nice to have for a lot of organizations um, because they do want custom symbols to be made to represent their business ideas in the way that they're used to it. It just happens all the time. An organization, you know, will have say, listen, we always represent it with this particular way of putting things, um, you know, on the page and your extensive symbol palette just simply doesn't have that. And that's okay. It's not a problem. You can create custom symbols. It's just, it's just not essential for the tool to operate. Um, but we're going to cover that today. And it's a, a little, it's a pretty quick and easy thing to do. And if you've never used the Aria Symbol Editor before, today will be an opportunity for you to take a look at how it's done. So let's get into it. The Aris Symbol Editor is located inside of Aris Architect under Aris Symbol Editor. Isn't that convenient? So the first thing you're going to need to do is create an .amf, Aris Meta file, for a symbol. Um, you'll see that there's a blank sort of canvas in front of you and a bunch of kind of weird shaped Aris graphic symbols that are usable. They're just sort of like um, random shapes that are that are possible. They, they come out, out of our, our uh, library. Um, you can also sort of add more shapes and symbols to this palette um, and pick from them. But I got to tell you, you know, the, the, well, these, the, there's a lot of things. You can also modify our default symbols to match your needs. And yeah, well, we have, you know, almost 2000 symbols ready to go. You're probably going to want to bring in something from the outside. Um, so in this case, we're going to go to insert graphic. And if you've watched a previous video, you know that, know that there's a little bell icon that this, uh, that this fictitious company, this example company might use as an icon that they've got as a symbol. So I'm gonna click and drag that little graphic onto the page. Here's my little bell icon. And this is what it looks like. Um, I can change things more. I can add you know, a rounded square in the middle or I can do whatever I want um, to, to change the, the shape or I can change the colors, I can change the properties, I can change all that sort of things um, if I wanted to. But let's just, for, the, for simplicity's sake, all you wanted to do is bring in a graphic you already have. Okay, let's save that little bell icon as an Aris meta file. Now I've got a bell icon symbol. What do I do with it? Well, the, I got to go back to my administration menu, which we took, took a look at before. And now we're going to go back to configuration and to our method and add that to symbols. Uh, remember we had that sort of symbol library uh, that we took a look at um, when we were talking about modifying our method. Well, over here in our symbol library, we need to add a new symbol to it. So let's go uh, right click uh, and uh, add a new symbol. Now we're gonna you choose to derive a symbol um, from this particular uh, symbol that, that exists because we wanna, we wanna associate it with something. So let's just, let's just say the bell is a notification, something like a risk. Uh, so I'm gonna go down over here to risk. And I'm gonna go and, and derive a symbol from that risk. It's, it's gonna associate it with all the same things that risks are associated with because we wanna make sure that it's not a symbol just hanging out nowhere, it's actually associated with an object. And let's go and, and this is the original. So we're gonna go over here and we're going to choose this bell icon. So here's our new symbol uh, for risk. And I'm gonna hit okay. And here is another symbol for risk now brought in. Now I can actually even edit this a little more. I can call this like the risk bell and give it a, a nice name that's handy. Now remember, if you, uh, if you took a look at our previous series on modifying your method, you're also going to want to go back through and make sure that risk bell can show up. So I'm gonna to go to model types. And remember in model types, so I, let's go to my risk uh, 
diagram. Model types, you want to make sure that you choose the list of symbols that are allowed to exist on your models. And, oh, hey, look, risk bell defaults as uh, being allowed because it's in the same category. But in, in case you had added a, a symbol that wasn't the default or a model type, you would have to go back and add that in there. And remember, you can just go simply click the add button over there uh, and find from the list of possible symbols that exist. Um, and then connections, let's say, well, you, now, now we actually need to add that. Um, because remember, risks are allowed to connect to risks and things like that. Um, and risk bells can, can be generalizations of these things. Um, and, now they're, and now they're also associated with risk bell. Um, so in the case, but once again, in the case you added a symbol um, to your palette that wasn't part by default of this particular model, you would have to go add these in. Once again, that's what the add button over here. So deriving a symbol is a really fast and easy way to get that symbol up and running quickly. And now I can use that in my models uh, when I'm building risk models. Uh, so in the case that I have a risk library and I want to now have this risk bell um, as part of that risk library, that would be an easy way to get things moving. So let's do that. Let's refresh our database. By the way, just as a tip for all the admins out there, you probably want to refresh your database relative whenever after you make any change. And some of your changes to your method, some of the changes to, uh, yeah, to, to, to the method into the method filters might take a couple minutes just to, to be uh, available to you as a user. Don't be worried. Um, for instance, in a previous video, uh, one, one of the changes that I made with the import needed to have a refresh before it, before it showed up in the dead, dead database hierarchy. It just happens. It's easy, it's easy to, get, to get lost in that. But let's go over here and create that new risk diagram. So here's my model. And let's try and use that symbol on our model. Uh, and let's see risk here. Uh, we are risk diagram and here's my risk library. And then uh, you can, you, it, yeah, it, it takes, as I said, it takes a little while for this, this uh, methodology change to set in. You might also have to restart your ARIS architect um, and that, that, that will give you access to that. Let's see if it's available in ARIS Connect at this point in time. So I'm gonna close down this particular risk library and refresh my ARIS Connect and open that risk library up in Connect. Because um, I'd, I'd like to show you using our brand new risk bell object uh, and, and having that sort of in our production environment. So open up your demo database, opening back up our library models, risks, and our risk library. Um, one other thing to, to remember is with, with all of the changes to your method, you'll also want to add that to your method filter if you're filtering for that. Right now, we are not currently using a method filter um, for the library, but hey, what do you know? Here is our nice risk bell. Um, and that object is now available, ready to go. And right in the center of it is called a risk bell. And of course, it can connect to everything that I want, like a risk is a, is a generalization of a risk bell or something like that. So nice way of bringing all these things together. And you can see it took me, you know, 30 seconds to make a symbol, another 20 to, to bring it in. And I waited a couple minutes to, to just get that to, to realize itself in the method and easy from there. So simple and fast, make your own symbols, uh, make it available to users and give people what they want. And that's, that's how we keep a consistent visual language uh, that between the way that you did it before Eris and the way you're doing it with Eris. Once again, I'm Jay Emerald, and thank you so much for listening. If you've got feedback, comments, uh, any ideas for more videos, we would love to help you out with that. Um, leave us a message on ariscommunity.com or through the learning portal or just generally by contacting us. Um, we're, we're happy to listen and happy to make more content to help you become a more adept Eris professional. Thanks so much and see you in the next one.